Hi everyone, this is Andrew Hoffman. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you're not a subscriber, make sure to click the subscribe button on the bottom right of this video. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you this really cool tool called Godot. It looks like Godot, but my understanding is it's pronounced Godot. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. And the reason I'm showing you this is because I actually just started playing around with this over the holidays just for fun. And this game engine has really blown my mind. So I'm not a game developer by trade. I'm a software engineer and a security researcher, but from time to time I pick up Unity or I've picked up tools like libgdx and I've built little simple games for myself to play just to do something creative on the side. Now, Godot is amazing because it takes a lot of the complicated parts of building a game and it really simplifies and streamlines them to the point where I think a lot of people with minimal programming experience could build complex games using Godot. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to build an entire top-down 2D RPG in really just about 15 or 20 minutes. I'm not even pulling your leg. So we're gonna get the majority of the work out of the way aside from the production of content and there'll be movement, there'll be collisions, etc. So where do we start? Well, we click this download button, right? And you'll see two different versions. There's a C-sharp supported version and a standard version. I'm gonna download the standard version and the reason why is because I've been practicing this with GDScript, the native programming language that ships with Godot. It's a little bit like JavaScript. And although I don't think it's a perfect programming language, the documentation for GDScript is fantastic. I can't say the same about the c -sharp documentation. It's good, but not fantastic. You can tell this is a game engine that was built for being used with GDScript. Now, if you look down here, it's only a 35 megabyte download. That's not too bad. Let's double click it and you'll see there's only one exe 76 megabytes so we're going to create a new folder we're going to call it godot inside of this folder we're going to open that up we're going to drag and drop this exe and that's basically it uh, one of the most amazing things about godot is it's a standalone portable executable so you have the whole game engine right there so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to actually create a new project and i'm going to create a folder here for the project i'm going to call it game very simple, it's just it's just gonna be game. And in Godot, you, you click new project and then you figure out where the product project should be. So in this case, it'd be desktop slash Godot slash game. There we go. And then you just click create and edit. And now you have access to the full Godot game engine. Welcome to Godot. So before we can do anything inside of the game engine, I'm gonna jump back here. And inside of the game folder, I'm gonna create another folder called assets. And we're going to need a couple of assets. So one thing I found is on this itch.io website, there's a number of paid and free pixel art assets, and some of them are really high quality. So this guy released this pixel art asset pack for free, Kanos. I'm going to give him a shout out, C-A-I-N-O-S. And he released this pixel art for free, and you can use it to test your game before you, you know, build your own assets if you are not maybe an artist by trade. So you click download here. And then we're gonna to go to download, there we go. We have this pixel art pack. Let's open up the assets, jump in this texture folder and just drag them all over. Well, I'm gonna actually create a, a player asset as well. So I'm gonna to go to paint.net. But you can use any editor that you want. We're gonna to go to file, new. We're gonna do 32 by 32, which is you know kind of a standard for pixel art. And we're just gonna make this, let's say blue, and let's put a big yellow P on it so that we know that it's the player whenever we're doing something, uh, like moving it around the screen, for example. There we go. So we're gonna go save as, and in this case, we're gonna go to the assets, and we're just gonna call it player. Cool, so now we have a bunch of beautiful pixel art from kanos.itch.io, check him out. And we have a little player icon we're gonna jump in here and we're gonna create our first scene. That's the first thing that Godot tries to get you to do, or Godot. But before we do that, we're gonna create a folder called Scenes and another called Scripts. Now, before I really dig into the scene, I just wanna explain that there's only two things in Godot and that's one of the most amazing things about this game engine, why it's so simplified. There are nodes which represent objects in the game world and there are scripts which represent code that acts on those objects. So in this case, we want a 2D scene and we're just gonna save it and inside of the scenes folder and this is gonna be our main scene. Cool, so now we have a level. 
Now, inside of this scene, we obviously want some art, so we're going to create a child node. Once again, just another type of node. This is going to be a tile map. So a tile map lets us take PNG images, uh, like a PNG that has a lot of images, and break them into individual images. So here we're going to go 32, 32, 32, since that's how the pixel art is designed. We're going to save that, and we're going to say new tile set. Click the icon to the left of it. Now in here, what we're going to do is we're just going to pull in this grass tile set. Maybe zoom in a couple clicks and, you know, make a few tiles out of this. We're going to click, uh, let's not do that right now. Let's click this snapping tool. There we go. Now we can snap. We can get some grass. We can get, you know, some flowers. We get a couple of these. Looks like a trail of some sort down here. Very cool. And uh, yeah, that's it. We're going to go back to here and click on the tile set again. Now we're going to go to kind of the zero, zero right here. Yep. So this is the center of the game world. We're just going to draw a whole bunch of grass tiles. There we go. So now we have, you know, some grass tiles. We can use this fill tool. We can fill it like that. And we can just kind of toss a couple of flowers periodically in here. Don't make them too common. There we go. And we'll even, you know, maybe draw a path going through. And we can alternate these tiles a little bit, make it look a little bit more beautiful. Even put some broken tiles in periodically. Very cool. Okay, awesome. So we, we kind of have a foundation here. And we're going to save this. And like I said, a scene is just a collection of nodes and scripts. It, it really threw me off at first because I'm like, what is a scene? This sounds quite complex. It's just nodes and scripts. So I'm going to create a new scene, and this is going to be called the player scene. And because a scene is a collection of nodes and scripts, we can create a scene that starts with a root node of a kinematic body 2D. And that's just a node that has 2D physics uh, functions already attached to it. So we'll add a child node that's maybe a sprite. And we'll add another child node that's some type of collider. So we go to collision shape 2D, and then in this collision shape 2D, we need a sprite to attach it to. So let's pull our player onto the sprite. Click on the collision shape up here in shape. Let's do a rectangle, and let's make sure it's the right size to match the player. There you go, we have a player. So let's go back to the main scene, and scenes can contain other scenes. So let's just drag the player there. Very cool. So now we have this player who's kind of in this grass scene. We click play, what happens? Well, you can see we can't actually see anything, and that's because the camera does not default to following the player. So inside of the main scene, this kinematic body 2D right here, this is the player. And we're going to attach a camera to it. This is going to be a camera 2D, just another node that controls the camera. We're going to click current, and this just says this camera needs to track whatever his parent is, in this case, the player. Now we can track the player. So that's super exciting. But we haven't actually written any scripts yet. So that's one thing to consider. So scripts are pretty easy to write in Godot to start off. Um, the GD script language is fairly simple. And, you know, I, I would say one of the biggest benefits of Godot is just the fact that you can attach a script to literally anything. So in this case, we can attach a script to our player, we can attach scripts to our, our, our main node, any node can have a script attached to it. So what do we want to do with the player? Well, we want the player to be able to move with the user input. So we go to project, project settings, and they have this thing called the input map. So we can say like um, up, down, left and right. And this allows you to bind keys to kind of uh, enums. So these are actions that you can program in the game. So up is going to be the key. No, we don't want to be two. We want up to be the physical key W. We want down to be the physical key S. We want left to be the physical key A. We want right to be the physical key D. There we go. And now we create a script and we'll just call this script the player script. So here we go, we have this script, and um, first things first, the player is a kinematic body 2D. So let's say kinematic body 2D, so we can inherit all the functionality of that kinematic body 2D. 
and then we'll kill this boilerplate code and really what we need is we need a couple of things so first of all we're gonna need a function that's gonna let us read input from the user so we'll just call it read input and it's gonna say if input dot is action pressed and it's gonna be up then we're gonna do a whole bunch of stuff now we want one of these for each of the actions we defined so we're going to have up, down, left, and right. There we go, left, and here we go, right. Now we need to actually call this read input periodically. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to have this function called underscore uh, physics process delta. And what the game engine does is instead of using a timer, which can be a little bit more inaccurate and you know have inconsistencies, the physics process delta is called every single time the physics step occurs. So you can bind it in the project settings here. There's this, there's somewhere in here where you can set, let's see, I'm gonna try to find it. There should be a physics 2D common. Yeah, so physics FPS 60. So this physics process will be called 60 times per second. So effectively, if we call read input from here, it's just gonna be saying like, let's you know read the input 60 times per second and let's try to keep it on a very accurate interval awesome so the next thing we need to do is when this happens we need to move the player so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a variable we're gonna call it velocity and when we're talking about scripting in GD script there's an inheritance system. So we could create an entity character or we could create a general character that could apply to both you know, enemies, NPCs, and users, and we could inherit from that. In this case, we're only gonna try to control the player. So what we're gonna do up here is we're gonna define, we're gonna say velocity, and we can typecast using the colon. We say vector two, so this has to be a vector two, and then we set it equal to just a new vector two. Uh, we might also want something later on like direction and we could set that equal to a vector two and then instantiate it as a vector two so we have some options here the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to inside of the read input we're going to say velocity is equal to a vector two so we're actually going to just reset it to an empty vector and when we have this up right here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say velocity dot y minus equals one. We're gonna say direction equals a vector two of zero minus one. And this will allow us to tell what direction the player is facing in. Should we want to implement, for example, a spell cast or we want them to shoot a gun in a particular direction. So the direction is kind of a, um, a variable there for future functionality. So let's see, we have the down here. The down is gonna be velocity dot y plus equals one. And then the direction here becomes vector two with, uh, should be zero one. Now left is gonna be velocity dot x minus equal to one and direction equals vector two minus one zero and finally right is going to be velocity dot x plus equals one and direction equals vector two one and zero wonderful so the final thing that we have to do here is we've, we have this vector and a vector is just a combination of a direction and a magnitude. And in this case, whenever we create a vector, we only create it with two numbers. Typically vectors require three numbers, but we only need two numbers because the default first number in any vector two in Godot is zero, zero. So it's always a arrow pointing out from the zero, zero line. So down here, we have a vector which is pointing in the direction that we want to move given the input that is pressed. 
So the final thing we have to do is we have to say velocity equals velocity dot normalized. And this is a function that comes uh, inside of Godot. And what normalize does is if you're pressing two at once, it'll make it so your, your, your vector, the power of your vector is equivalent to pressing one at a time. So going at diagonals does not go twice as fast as going up, down, left, right. And then we're gonna say velocity right here is gonna be equal to move and slide. And we're gonna do velocity times a speed, which maybe is like 200 or something. There we go. So move and slide is a built-in function that applies the movement to the character, but also at every physics process, we'll check for collision. So if we click play now, nothing's gonna happen because the script is not attached to the player. However, we can go to this player scene and we can attach the player script to the kinematic body 2D, click play again, and all of a sudden we have movement. So we now have a top-down RPG with movement. Well, how do we implement collision? Because you know we want to introduce things on our map that we can collide with. Well, if we go back to the main scene here and we go to this tile map, what we can do is we can add some collidable tiles to the tile map. And in this case, I'll just add something very simple. Um, let's see, so this is the grass tile set. It also looks like there's a props tile set. So we're gonna jump into the props tile set. We're gonna jump down here and we're just gonna add a rock. Something simple, there we go, we've added a rock. Now we're gonna click collision, we're gonna click on this rock after clicking the square. We're gonna add the default collision 32 pixels by 32 pixels to this rock. Well, that was pretty simple. So now inside the tile map, we have this rock object and we can actually just surround our entire little working area with this rock as a demonstration and save it and boot it up. And now we have the capacity to move using that movement script. However, when we run into a tile that has collision baked into it, because we have a collider on the player and there's a collider that's been added to these rocks, we cannot walk through these rocks. Now, if you wanted to introduce more functionality, like you want to figure out who the player is colliding with, you just look up the Godot API for Kinematic Body 2D, and there's a function that's something akin to like last collided object. And just inside of your player.gd on the physics step, you would say var last collided object, you'd look at it and it'll be like, oh, it's a rock or whatever you named that object. In this case, it doesn't have a name, so it's gonna be something generated by the engine but that's how you determine collision in the case of uh, collision with an NPC to reduce your health, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the fundamentals of the Godot game engine, and now you're able to produce a top-down 2D RPG, and I think that's really fascinating. Uh, big shout out to the Godot game engine team. They really took something incredibly complicated if you use Unity or Unreal, or even before that, where it was much more complicated, one of the most complex games I made, I made it using a Java library, libgdx, where you had to write pretty much all of this by hand. And not only have they simplified it, simplifying is sometimes the easy part, but they simplified it in a way that I think is really scalable and really easy to learn with the node system and the fact that almost everything is either a node or a script, and a scene is just a combination of nodes and scripts. So you don't have to go about learning a whole bunch of different ways to do your programming. You just pick up this game engine, you get started writing your code, and before you know it, you've got your own game. So I was really excited to share this with you guys today because I think it's a really cool technology. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel. I have programming and cybersecurity videos that come out very frequently. And otherwise, if you have any questions or comments that I could help you with or feedback on your opinion on the Godot game engine, leave it in the comment section below the video. Thanks for watching.